Brett Okamoto with UFC President Dana White. We are just moments after UFC 239 here in Las Vegas and always plenty to talk about, but let's start with that main event. That was the closest fight that we've seen John Jones in a long time. I know you, you don't always like to, to score the fights. You say your scores don't matter. I'm going to ask you anyway, Close. how did you score that fight? Anybody who scores that fight for Santos is out of their mind. Really? Yeah, you, you should never judge another fight if you judge Santos. Santos fought tough. He's a tough guy. He, he uh, you know, something happened to his knee or his leg. I, I don't know exactly what in the second round, and he fought through it and was tough, but yeah, he lost that fight. i got to be honest. Uh, if you check my Twitter account, I scored at 48-47 for Santos. So... I'm done scoring fights, that I guess, sense. right? That makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, to explain to me this then. Why, did, uh, why in your opinion, did, did John win that fight? John Jones controlled the whole fight. Walked him down, controlled the pace of the fight, controlled everything. John Jones, um, you know, moved forward. You know, at, at the end, you could tell John was hurt, too. His legs were busted up. He had to be carried out of the octagon, but uh, he absolutely won that fight. Was it a good performance by John tonight, did you think? He won. Listen, it wasn't a two-and-a-half-second flying knee knockout. It wasn't a knocking out somebody who's never been knocked out in MMA before and, and things like that. But, you know, he went out and uh, he won the fight. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a crowd pleaser. It's not one of those wins that has everybody jumping up and down for joy. But he won the fight against a really tough guy who, who came to fight and who came to win. Well, even though you don't agree with the one scorecard that went Tiago Santos' way, that's still historic. To my knowledge, it's the first time there's ever been a scorecard go against John Jones. So do you think because it's historic, like, do you have any interest in setting up that fight again, or you feel pretty comfortable moving on from Tiago Santos? Yeah, I, I thought that John completely dominated that fight. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm not thinking about a rematch, no. Okay. Amanda Nunes, I mean, I feel like I've asked you this question before. She goes out and she has these spectacular performances. This one against Holly Holm, what did you make of her performance? Yeah, I, I thought that uh, she looked incredible. I mean, obviously, when I talk about her being the greatest ever, <clears throat> it's about not only who you fought and who you beat, but how you beat them. Mm -hmm. And if you look at all the greats, she's fought all the greats now. Mm -hmm. You know, Holly was the last one. And if you look at how she performed against Holly, it's, I mean, you can't deny it anymore. If you, if you were ever in denial, it's over. You can't. There's there's no question that she, in my opinion, and I think universally, that she is the best female fighter in the world right now. There does seem to be ever. a little... Ever. Yeah, I will agree with you there as well. But there does seem to be some debate. I, you know, I put out on social media, she's a superstar. And some people are like, nah, she's not a superstar yet. She's the best in the world, but she hasn't really crossed over into that marketing superstar. How do you view her, her drawing power? So tonight we did... Let me, let me just tell you this. All the numbers. And when I say all the numbers tonight are off the charts including like we did a 50-50 raffle, you know, $100,000 and the, 50, the, the numbers tonight are off the charts and she's a part of that. Um, you know, it was a great card and a card that a lot of people were excited about. She's the co-main event. I, 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 I tell you guys this all the time. I don't listen to this stupidness. Mm -hmm. People who say she's not a star or this isn't this or this isn't that, they have no idea what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't listen to that type of stuff. She has burned through, you know, the who's who of, of female big names. I mean, her biggest fights, you could say at least many of them are behind her. You know, the Ronda Rousey's, the Misha Tate's, the Chris Cyborg's. So I do want to ask you, what do you see is, is next for her? How do you continue to keep this run going after she's, you know, dominated all these big list of names? Yeah, you just, you know, she, she wants to rematch with Cyborg next. We'll see if Cyborg is up for that and if she wants to do it. Um, and if not, then there will be somebody else. There's always somebody else. I mean, well, this is the same stuff we were saying about George St. Pierre, Anderson Silva, you know, and the list goes on and on. John Jones and, you know. Is there any way, and I know you've been talking about this all week, but is there any way you can clear up why there seems to be this miscommunication or misconception about you say that, that you want, you're, you're open to the rematch, Amanda says she wanted the rematch, she accepted the rematch, and Chris is out there saying, I was never the offer of the rematch, I wanted the rematch. Well, clear, how does this happen? What do you think? Do you think I don't, I'm really not trying to make the rematch? Mm -hmm. I've been putting on fights for 20 years, mm -hmm. okay? So do you really think I'm not trying to make the rematch? I just don't understand how there's a, a lack of... You don't? Just a, a completely two different sides of the story. So what does that tell you? I don't know. There's not two sides of the story. There's three sides of the story. Mm -hmm. You got Amanda who says she wants it. You got me who says I'll make it. Mm -hmm. And you got the other one saying she was never offered it. Mm -hmm. You do the math on that one. So to be clear, just to be absolutely clear, Chris Cyborg has made, it, has made it known that it is the final fight on her contract. You would like to resign her. You would like to keep her in the sure. UFC. Sure. We'll do a deal with her tomorrow to fight Amanda Nunes and... Mm -hmm for the rematch. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
You were uh, sitting front row. You got a pretty good look at, at George Masvidal's flying knee yeah. against Ben Askren. What, what was your reaction to it? Wow. I mean, it was. It's one of those things. You know, you, you if you're Masvidal, you're assuming he's going to run right out and shoot on you. Mm -hmm. So you're going to run right out and throw the flying knee, and yeah, it was. It was one of the most vicious knockouts I've ever seen in my life. It's going to be hard to top. I mean, it's the fastest knockout in UFC history, but you do have another big welterweight fight between Colby Covington and Robbie Lawler. Is George Masvidal the next number one contender, or do we not know yet? Well, it was like, it was like Rogan said. That, that knockout was really like two seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, he hit him with a couple more shots, and the ref didn't get there in time. Um, you know, but really the fight was over when that knee landed. It's kind of weird, you know, Ben Askren for so long, we wanted to know how, how real is this guy? You know, he was, he was undefeated. He was fighting outside of the UFC, though, not fighting guys in the top 10. Now he's come over and he's had a weird fight with Robbie Lawler where it was like, was the guy out? Was he not out? And now a, a two second knockout, really. Do you think we've really learned what we have in Ben Askren or is it still going to take some time to figure it out? Um, listen, I, you know, for me to say anything negative about the kid right now, I like the guy. I like him. He came over here. He, he he got his shot here that he was looking for, um, you know. And, and and people were interested. People people liked it and and liked the whole thing uh, with Ben Askren. He's had a rough two first fights in the UFC. Last thing I'll ask you is that one thing I noticed about this card is a lot of young talent, a lot of guys who are 21, 22 years old. You know, Song Yadong, Edmund Amen. Shabazian. Yeah. It's probably hard to, to pick just one, but who impressed you the most amongst the youngsters tonight? Yeah, it's, it's hard. You know, they, they both did. You know, th those two both had uh, incredible performances, and like you said, so young. And, uh, you know, Edmund, 10 and 0 at 21 years old, impressive. How quickly are you looking to, to move those guys along? I mean, I, Darren Till comes to mind when you mentioned in recent weeks and maybe you moved him along too quickly. But when you got a guys who are just starching people in the first round, how will you handle the development of those young guys? Yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best uh, at what we do and try to, you know, get these guys the right fights at the right time. When you look at a kid that's 21 years old, how many fights is he going to have when he's 30? 50? You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. So, uh, but you heard him tonight. Edmund wants to be the youngest champion and mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So we'll see we'll see how he progresses and we'll see how um, this thing plays out. But it's exciting and it's fun. Ronda Rousey texted me tonight and said, "I told you he was special." Did she? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, uh, thank you for the time. Great night of fights. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN+.